Well, hello everyone. How are you today? It's Sharon here from uh, Essential Stencil. Well, I'm an ambassador for Essential Stencil. I am from the blog I Restore Stuff. That's my business name. Uh, and I love to restore furniture, upcycle, home decor, make create signs from Essential Stencil's wonderful stencil collections. So welcome today for another live DIY. If you're joining me for the first time, let me know in the comments. Also, if you are watching the replay of this live, there's another chance to win a prize. So comment the word replay in uh, the comment section. And, um, but if you're joining us right here live, say hello because that's your chance to win some prizes here at Essential Stencil. We'll be drawing three lucky winners at the end of our live. So, hi Kimberly, how are you? Sherry's here, Joyce Ann's here. You guys, I love just seeing those regulars just pop on to our live here. Now, I don't know if you can see a little sneak preview of my TV screen behind me here. I have had my logo up there in the past, but you know, I was just looking at the little remote and I saw this www. I'm like, oh, we can see the internet on my screen. So I thought I'd pop up the brand new winter collection from Essential Stencil. Has anyone had a little sneak peek at that yet? So the link for that is also in my description of my live. Um, we, nobody's got them yet. You can't even pre-order them until Monday, okay? So Monday is your pre-order day. But I got that up on the screen, so let's have a little look. You probably won't be able to see uh, it hugely, but I'll see if I can kind of quickly scroll through. We've got some fun um, vertical winter light post, which looks just gorgeous. Let me see if I can kind of scroll here. There we go. We've got some beautiful uh, elf surveillance, large tags that would be great for front door. Santa's workshop. There's some great mini tags. And guys, I helped design some of these little mini tags here. Some fun things for your Christmas decor. So you can just jump on the Essential Stencil um, link that's in the description of my live. And there's so many mini tags, some more mini tags. Lots of fun coming up in the winter collection. Pre-orders start Monday, so don't forget to use my code, iRestoreStuff, to get your 10% off. And uh, you'll be able to see all of those Felice Navidad, a great big, beautiful, um, some street signs there, some cute little tag mini patterns. So I don't know if you can see those there. Yeah, the elf tag is very cute. Some Christmas gnomes. All the stockings were hung with cute little stockings that you can create in different um, patterns. So that's the winter collection coming. Pre-orders start Monday. Just scrolling through really quickly so you can see that in the background there as we go on. I love this, guys. It's a um, Argyle. I didn't even know the name of that. Argyle pattern. Anyway, pre-orders start for that Monday. So hello to those of you who are just joining. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Trina. Vicky. Maggie's here. Let me just see if I can find my live here on the laptop. Whoops. I missed myself. There we go. Let's see. <clears throat> Sometimes it doesn't show up. Now I have to change my change who I'm watching it as for it to come up in my feed. Here I am. So let me know how you're going. Yes, Diana, the vintage stencils are very cool. I am doing well. It's still a little bit cold. You know how like end of season for here in Australia. If you if you're new here, I'm from Australia, and uh, so just let me see if I can find our comments. There we are. Uh, from Australia, and so we're finishing off winter, going into spring. Yay! And you guys are starting fall there. Um, so it's it was we had some beautiful spring days, and then all of a sudden the season tries to say, "Hey, I'm still here." So I've got my long sleeves on again today. Um, yes, I know, Sharon. I want all the new stencils too. They are they are looking really very gorgeous. Some of those Christmas and winter related stencils. We've got. Sleigh bells ring, jingle all the way, hello winter, merry Christmas, happy holidays signs, lots of fun there. So you can pre-order those Monday. Meanwhile, guys, I also made a mistake last week on our live here. I said that there was like only a few hours left of the Stencil of the Month Club, but no, you've had weeks. So <laughs> there's still another week left that you can order the, um, what are we up to? Are we in September? September Stencil of the Month Club set. So if you haven't joined, you can still join now. Use my code, I Restore Stuff, 
for 50% off your first month. So you can try the club this month that comes in this gorgeous envelope, which I've already cut up because I think I love those little designs. Use them for card making or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. So comes in three huge stencil sets like this. And so there are the fall designs right there. Meet me at the pumpkin patch, a whole bunch of fun there. I may try and use the add-on today. So you always get the optional add-on. Has the little word add-on up here. And that's a gorgeous design. So that's the stencil of the month club set. So there's still time to order that. There was an error on the website last week when I was live and I was thinking there was only a few hours left. But yes, you've got another week to order that and that is shipping now. So <clears throat> get in on that one. Okay, the stencil set that I'm gonna be using today. <clears throat> Hi Dawn, hi Debbie. Lovely to see your comments. Okay, join in the conversation. There's prizes at the end, guys. So we're gonna be using this set here today. It's a three pack and it's called It's Full Y'all. And um, there we go. I can see if I can reach that up to the phone there. There's this stencil here. It's Full Y'all, very cute. We've got some gorgeous, I like the flourishes with the leaves on the end. Um, and there's also uh, a hello fall, which, you know, you could just use the word hello in that as well. Let me just grab that out real quick so I can show you. It's right here in the middle. And then today I'm going to be using the welcome sign from this set. There's the hello fall. So, you know, you could just use the word hello and pop that on a stencil or a sign somewhere as well. So... Today, there's also, this is the third one in the set, so that is the welcome sign. And I was going to do this one last week, but I ran out of time, so I'm going to get into it this week. So look at the cute little, oh, I'm back to front here, squirrel at the end there, and the acorn. Lots of fun flourishes on that one. Remember that you can mix and match things to create different uh different ideas from your essential stencil stencil sets. So, you know, you could take some of these flourishes and add them to other parts of your set. So what I've done is I have done one of my, um, the, the funnest things that I love to do is uh, create getting old canvases. So this one had some canvas stapled. You can see the staple marks on the back there. <coughs> and I just took, took the canvas off and then you're left with this nice, really solid, and it's quite thick, uh, pine frame. And this one has a little bit of a, a beveled edge as well. So it kind of makes it nice. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of beveled inwards. So now I'm going to stain that. The way I'm going to stain it today is by using one of Fusion Mineral Paints waxes. They're espresso wax. It's a nice rich brown color. So I'll show you how I wax the frame because right now that's just raw. So wax goes beautifully on raw or over painted pieces. So if you want to see more about waxing, you can visit my blog, irestorestuff.com. I've got lots of furniture painting tutorials, how to wax, how to finish your, um, your furniture pieces there. So I'll be waxing that today. Then what I did was I cut out a plywood board, just a thin ply board that I've painted in white so I can make a cute farmhouse sign with that. So I've got a few of um, these that I've done over the years and it's just such a great way of uh, repurposing old canvases, which you can just literally pick up from uh, thrift stores anywhere, these wooden, um, but make sure if you turn the canvas over, you'll be able to see what kind of wood is in it. You don't want something that's just particle board, particle board like an MDF. I like to use the solid wood because then it has the nice grain of the wood in the frame. So you can see that at the back of the frame, at the back of the canvas before you purchase them. But you know, a couple of dollars at a thrift store and you get these gorgeous wooden frames or you just, and then you just cut out a piece of plywood <coughs> and put it on the back. So we'll get started with stenciling. Now, don't forget you can use my code, I restore stuff. Well, I would love you to share our live right here. And um, let me just see if I can do that. Hit that little share button, sprinkle the love. And I'm gonna just send that to my page. Now, my page is called I restore stuff. 
and uh, you can find that on um, Facebook or any of the social media platforms. You just use the at symbol I Restore Stuff on YouTube, on Instagram, Pinterest, all of the different places. So hello to everyone just joining. Yes, garage sales, Karen. Perfect place to pick up some of those canvas frames. Um, this one actually had a, someone had printed a photograph. You know how you send off to get your photographs printed onto canvas? And so it, the photograph didn't mean anything to me, so I just picked up the frame, took the photograph off, and um, used the frame. So on my board now I've got the welcome sign. I'll pop you down here in just a second. Um, and you'll notice that my board is not exactly straight at the bottom, and I've penciled a line where it should be cut off. But because it's going behind the frame, it really doesn't matter. But I wanted to just put that there so that I could know where the uh, where it's balanced. These sides are all straight, but this side was a bit wiggly. So that's okay. As long as I've got my line there, I know what is straight and what is not. Now, when I place the frame over the top, you can kind of see that the stencil goes fairly close to the edges on there. And uh, so depending on, you know, there's lots of different stencils from Essential Stencil that would fit inside here, but see how close that is to the edge? So you want to make sure that when you uh, it, when you're finished, when you staple the board, that it's not covering up some of that design, okay? We do have a little bit of space here and at the top. We'll see what it looks like when I'm finished stenciling. I may want to add some more flourishes, which that's what I was thinking I could use with Essential Stencil's uh, Stencil of the Month Club add-on for this month is use some of these leaves to maybe just flourish a little bit more down the bottom. So we'll start with a bit of stencil tape so that I can put it in place. <coughs> Excuse me. Thinking about there, sort of the center of the frame. Popping a little bit in place there. Hello everyone, thank you for joining. Don't forget to sprinkle and uh, sprinkle the love. Don't forget to also, you can use my code for any of these stencils or products that you're looking at today from Essential Stencil. Even the brushes, you can get 10% off the brushes or 50% off your first month in the Stencil of the Month Club. Alrighty. Excuse me a second. my little handy tissue. Thank you, Dana, for sharing. Yes, I love the welcome stencils. Welcome, you can't go wrong. You know, it's, it's even multi-seasonal. Even though we've got these gorgeous um, flourishes on there that are very full light. Now, I'm going to be using a little bit of colour today and I'm going to be using metallics. So stay tuned. Join in the conversation because not only do you get a, um, a live demo here today, you also get, oh, and I've forgotten my piece of cardboard. Let me see if I can reach them. You also get a chance at winning prizes, guys. Oop. I'm just rummaging through my re <laughs> recycling, if you can hear that. <laughs> rummaging through my recycling for some cardboard. Here we go. See, that was easy. And this is just simply to offload my my stencil brushes on because this is core flute at the back here so it's a bit plasticky so it's not going to really um, help with offloading. Alrighty, let's get started. Now I'm using the coal black from Fusion as just a bit of a base for the stencil and we may keep the welcome section in that but I want to add some colour in these flourishes and acorns and the squirrel here. <clears throat> but I want to do, I don't think I want to use the large one. I might use this. This is the 5 8 inch stencil brush. They come in a set of four brushes. Or the 5 8 did come in a single standalone brush, but I'm not sure if we've sold out of those or if they're back in stock. So someone else might have seen and be able to tell us. But So I am going to do all of it, but then remember we'll wait till this dries and we'll then go over. Um, in uh, the 
metallics and the colours that I was thinking of doing for those. All right, so those of you who are new to stenciling, sorry, I yes, you might have seen that. I, you can just see, I'm just making sure, every, go make sure everything's in shot. So you can see my offloading here. So here's my lid where the paint is, or you could just dip it into the jar. I've offloaded a bunch of paint onto the cardboard. That's the key to getting nice crisp edges on your stencils. So now I'm just going to do a little bit of a swirling. Because I've offloaded most of that paint off onto the cardboard, I can do that swirly and not have that paint bleed under the edges of the stencil. Okay, so that's how you do that without getting bleed through is just by offloading as much paint as you can onto your offloader, either your cardboard or paper plate, or whatever you use to offload. I do love the font too, Karen. I think it's gorgeous. I love the, the way it flows, the flourishes. See a little acorn and leaves on the top here. <coughs> so if you wanted to do two coats of that black to make that um, welcome sign really pop and stand out, you can do that. Just wait until, oops, I think I have too much on my brush. Just wait until that first coat dries and then you'll be able to add that second coat. So offload. There's our little squirrel. And I'm using coal black, which is a true black for fusion mineral paint. If you do need a link for fusion mineral, mineral paint, I've got my affiliate link. I'd love to be able to give that to you if you need it. Let me know in the comments. All right. <coughs> so I can see that in areas it does look like sort of fairly thin. So I may go back over that in a minute once it's dried completely properly. Oops. While we're waiting for that to dry, I always either pop in a, pop the black brush, the brush that I'm using that's got black on it, put it into a plastic bag so that, so that it doesn't dry out, or you can just wrap it in a wet cloth. Okay, so we're just waiting for that to dry a minute. I'll just show you a little peek of that while we're waiting for that to dry. Um, Yes, Janice, I'll get you that fusion link in a minute. Unless Essential Stencil has that handy, they can pop that in there for you. Um, there's the welcome sign there. So we see how we've got nice crisp edges because I offloaded the brush as much as I could. So we're going to leave that down there for a minute. And I'm going to show you how I wax the frame. So the frame, we don't need our offloader for this, is raw wood. And if you missed the beginning of our live, I've simply bought this as a canvas from a thrift store here in Australia and uh, removed the canvas. You can still see the staple marks at the back there. Removed the canvas and I've got a lovely wood pine frame to <coughs> do what I like with. You can stain it. So in other videos or other lives you may have seen me stain these using paint. So I just water down some brown paint or black paint and create a stain and then seal it. But today I'm just going to use actual Fusions wax. Now I'm using just a wax brush that I've obviously got wax on already, uh, but I pop, pop it in a plastic bag to stop it, Ziploc bag to stop it drying out. Now this is uh, color Espresso, so I do have a link for that as well for the um, Fusion Mineral Paint Espresso wax. And it's, this one's obviously quite old, so the, the label is um, a little bit older too. They've got some different labels now. But you just dip that into the wax. It gives you a lovely, I don't know, it feels like a high-end finish, I would, I would call it, when you're using wax on furniture and pieces like that. So I just uh, dip it into the wax. So I've got a fair chunk of wax on the, the wax brush. And then we're just going to... You've got to do this inside the frame, outside the frame and all over. But you're going to just smoosh the wax into the grain of the wood. So some, this is quite smooth finish. You can see how much it's sort of darkening that there. I'm going to get right into the edge here. 
smooshing it in. So with wax, it's you can you don't have to use a brush. You could apply the wax with a lint-free cloth also. And then we make sure we get onto this outside here, the outside edge as well. Let's see if I can get another bit out here. You can go round and round, but getting it along the grain actually makes sure it smushes in the grain. So waxing is as easy as apply, remove excess, wait for a few minutes, then buff. And when you're buffing, it's, it gives it a really sort of, it's not a shiny surface, but it's just has a beautiful sheen on it. Let's do two edges and then we'll be able to see sort of the difference. And then we'll go back to doing some more of the stencil. And obviously I'll finish this off completely before I put my sign all together. So I'm just putting the wax on. I still haven't buffed off this. And there isn't a lot of excess, so I'm just going to let it sit there a few minutes. It allows the colour. So some waxes are clear, some waxes are stained with like a brown, like this one is, or you can get black waxes. Fusion has a range of different waxes. You can use my affiliate link if you need that. I can pop that in for you. Let me just do that so I can... Um, let's pop it into the comments and I'm doing this as my name so you might see that there and then you can share that um, but if you do need that link let me know and I will get that for you so this is espresso is the name of the color of the wax so you can see there these two edges are quite a lot darker than these two. We've got our brown wax we've applied and then you wipe off the excess if there is any just with a lint-free cloth. I'm just using a Chuck's cloth. Wiping off any excess you can see that coming off there now that it's sat there for a couple of minutes. Any that might have dribbled around the edge. It doesn't really dribble. It's not liquid. It's quite waxy. But you don't want it to have too much um, wax on the surface. If you leave it there and you don't buff it, it will get quite sticky and tacky. And you don't want a tacky finish. You want a nice, smooth, shiny finish. So I'm just doing these two as an example to show you. So that's all the ex excess that I've removed. But it's a beautiful finish for... Uh, wood furniture. I use this on my tabletops. I didn't use it for this one, but I did have used it in the past. It's beautiful. Yes, you can. Connie says, I never knew you could use wax like this. I always thought it was used on top of a painted surface. Oh yeah, you can use it on plain wood. Um, I've done a whole tabletop in this that was this raw colour and I've done it with um, a brown wax and it just gives it that lovely wood finish. Now I'm going to just buff the surface. So buffing is simply kind of like when you're polishing shoes, you know, you back and forth motion, uh, leave, lifting it off the surface just slightly. Whoop, that we lost our whole, whole cloth. And it gives it a lovely finish. So just buffing the surface and that seals your piece too. So yes, you can use wax over the top of uh, painted pieces as well. And you can, can add further coats. So if you like to darken the colour that it already is. So I can just feel that cloth easily sliding over the edge now. And you don't, it's not a, it's not a matte finish. I would call it sort of like a semi-gloss almost. So I'll go and finish those later. But I just wanted to show you, I don't know if you can see a, a sheen over that but it's just such a beautiful feeling finish it just feels so nice and smooth silky smooth on there so that's how we wax our frame and I'll pop that down there put my wax brush back in the Ziploc bag <clears throat> no so Gloria the wax is not water-based because wax is wax and so it's you know if you have a candle that's going to, you know, any kind of wax resists water. So 
you don't want to, you put it over the top of water-based paints but you don't put paints over the top of wax so if I had a painted surface and then I waxed the surface I would not be able to stencil on top of that okay so it's very important that wax is always your last step if you're doing a piece of furniture or something like that that you use wax as the last step because you can't put any paint, water-based paint over the top of the wax. So I hope you learned something in that little wax tip thing there. Um, all right, so back onto our stenciling. We've got our welcome sign here. If you've just joined us, we are using the Hey It's Fall Y'all three-pack set with lots of fun things in it and fun ideas. I'm using the welcome and I want to add some metallics to here. Now I'm trying to decide, do I want to use them as a bit of a shadow? I might leave, use that black in some of these metallic flourishes that I'm going to add as a bit of a shadow. I'm not cleaning my stencil just yet. If you really wanted to, you could just make sure you clean that right off before you choose another color or do another color. So I'm not, oh no, I'm not going to do the whole thing in metallics. I just wanted to move it slightly. I'm going to move it slightly up and slightly across. And you'll be able to see this. Let me show you um, a close up. This is me zooming in. See the camera zooming? Okay, so now you can see there's a little white line where my stencil was, all right? So that's how you create a shadow shifting your stencil slightly up and slightly across, just slightly. You don't want to move it too much or it will look a bit weird. So that's our <coughs> stencil moving, uh, ready for shadowing. So I've got some fusion metallics here too. We've got a deep gold, which I don't think they stock that anymore. We've got a vintage gold and copper. I do love the copper, beautiful fall kind of colors. I also thought I've got this mustard color as well and I may even use that mustard as a bit of a background underneath the copper because I feel like it would make it stand out more especially on the edges. So let's do that first remembering that we've got to have a piece of card cardboard or something to offload our paint. So I've got that. And I will need some tape for this one. So because I'm going to do just certain parts of this, I want to get my tape and I'm making it a little bit less tacky by just kind of sticking it on my fingers and that way it doesn't stick to the paint as well too much. Okay, I'm just popping it over the base of that squirrels where the flourish is there so it doesn't catch on that. Uh, we may just do this leaf as well. Let's do all the leaves. So I could just get the same piece of uh, painter's tape as I go around because I've got a leaf under here and then I'll shift it and put it to that one. We've got the little acorn on the end. It's going to flourish the flourishes with a bit of bling. So if there's some areas, see that one, I might get that there because I don't want to get, if there's anything that's too close and you don't want to stencil over it, make sure you cover it up with a bit of painter's tape. Too easy. Okay, we've got over this side. Now this one, I may just do that whole bit and not worry, we can just kind of not worry about that too much. That, um, what do you call that? Swirl. All right, I'll leave that as is. We will go with a little bit of mustard. And just kind of create a bit of a background for the squirrel. I said I was using black as the background. I'll see if that, I might, might just do the squirrel and the acorns. Um, here's one, and this one doesn't matter too much if I, I could tape off here, but um, we'll just go with that. And then we'll be able to sort of see if what looks better with the mustard or without and then I'm going to do some copper. Okay so I've got my mustard here which I can put just in a little plastic. Mm. 
Yes, Connie said, I noticed you might be trying to remove a little tackiness from the tape by using your fingers. Yes, I do use my fingers or you can, I sometimes will put it here on my apron because then it'll catch a little bit of the fluff from the fabric um, and it stops it from sticking too much because otherwise the tape's a bit hard to pull off. So I'm using Fusion's copper metallic. <clears throat> Donna says that's a lot of tape. Actually, you should see some of the tape offs that we might have to do. <laughs> And this one, I can use um, some of these pieces again. Okay, it's a bit thick. When it's been sitting around in its little spot for a while, it gets a bit thicker. Okay, using our half inch stencil brush. You, I just kind of choose, like if this one's quite thin, the largest one is seven eighths of an inch, so that's quite thick. That's great for those bigger pieces where you've got lots more space within the stencil. So I'm letting that mustard dry on these bits. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead with these leaves and see how that looks. Okay, so dipping a little bit in this copper. So this is Fusion Metallic. If, if you can find my link there that I posted earlier, but just please ask if you, um, if you want that link, my affiliate link for the Fusion mineral paint. I really appreciate it when you use our affiliate links. And for the stencils, of course, you can use my code I restore stuff at Essential Stencil and get 10% off any of the stencils that we're using today and the brushes and all the things. Oh, wow, this is quite thick. So that actually looks fine just like that. I'm going to see if I can do this without getting it on that, that flourish. Oop, I might have missed. So if you wanted to, you could tape that off. Oh, this is quite thick and looking great. I'm liking this. Let me see if I can get up any closer for you so we can see it a bit better. So I'm just, instead of swirling completely, I'm pounce, swirl, pounce. No, it's not even a swirl, it's a wriggle. That's, that, that's my technical term for that. Okay, so over here again, I still haven't put any more paint on the brush. We're just doing pounce, wriggle. Counts wriggle. And you can see that that copper is really filling up that spot quite well. So if you can see the white line around here, we've just shifted our stencil slightly to give it um, shadowing. If you've never seen shadowing done before, I've got several tutorials where I do shadowing. In fact, I think there's a playlist still on the Essential Stencil Facebook page here that's called shadowing and any of the, the videos where I've used that technique are in that playlist. You just go to the video section in the tabs at the, on the Facebook page here and um, you can grab that. Oh, there we go. That's looking great. I love it. So that mustard of the acorns is fairly dry now, so I could probably do that. Now this one here, I might need to use my tape from here. I do actually have to use this tape and turn this one around and try and get this without getting it over everything. And now I'm going to have to see, I'm even reusing my tape, guys. I'm just a little bit of a recycler of things, of all the things. <laughs> all right. Oh, just about got the corner. I'm going to tear the tape a little bit so it turns around the corner. And we can tape off that leaf. So we're getting that leaf and that acorn there. Just a little dip in the copper paint again. Um, here we go. Offloading that onto my card. And then there we go. The acorn. I've gone copper on top of the mustard. I just thought that mustard might give it a better background. But yeah, I can see that it worked, I think. We yeah, tell the difference when we see the leaves, see how they pop. All right, so we've got our squirrel left to go and also this leaf down here, which I can use this piece. Just be careful when you're pulling up tape also because some of those little bridges are very fine, those bridge areas of the stencil. Okay, we're popping that down there. And let's see if we can get that nice and coppery. Oops, I feel like I'm just about to go over the edge on that one. 
just a tiny little dip more. Pouncing on top. Wriggle, wriggle, pounce, pounce. That's my technical terms. Okay, now we've got the squirrel to go. I think it needs just a touch more because it's a larger, it's a larger stencil place. Yeah, so sometimes it helps with metallics if you um, don't have something underneath it, like if this was just white underneath it. The black could have helped, but I just added that mustard. Sometimes you add, so copper, sometimes you'll add a red base. Gold, you might add that mustard base. So just having another colour underneath to kind of lift the colour of the metallic. I hope that makes a bit of sense. Okay, let's see. getting those edges where that shadow was. Okay, have I got all my flourishes? <clears throat> and then we'll see if we need to add any more down the bottom there. If we take this off, let's see how those shadows worked out also. Hi Lisa, are you excited to get back to stenciling and creating after your recent surgery? Oh, I hope that you'll be able to get back to crafting soon. That is awesome. Okay, so you can see there the slight shadow in those coppery tones and I don't know, the video doesn't often um, let you see the shimmer of the metallics but you can see the shadow there. It does sort of look brown but it is quite a nice metallic colour. If I had the lights on here, I probably forgot to turn my lights on to create a bit more light in here. Um, on this one you can see I did not tape off this little black line very well so the copper kind of bled over into that stem of the flourish the vine I think you would call that a little bit but that's okay so I like how that turned out now let's see if it might suit to add um, some of these flourishes now remember we've got our frame that's going to sit right here so we do still have a little bit of space here and here which may lend to some either some more flourishes or we could put individual little leaves scattered down here. I did think about these leaves here that might do okay. Let's have a look and see what that looks like uh, in copper rather than doing them in black. So let's have a look. So this one for example sort of placing it down where I want to. It just looks like it's kind of fallen or we could use little leaves. Hmm, what do you think guys? Some of these little leaves as if they've fallen down right here. Might be nice as well. Maybe we'll try one. This is a large one. Dip that in the paint in a second. Where is it gone? Oh, here we go. So if we put it that way, this leaf here, I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see white on white, isn't it? Um, just to add a little bit more down to the bottom, but we will have to use some of this tape to tape away those flowers so that they don't, they don't join in. there. We've got a little bit of pumpkin right here that we want to Becky likes the leaves falling. I was going to see what you guys commented to see. Karen you still have issues when you try to shadow. Oh let me um, let me just remind you to practice on some cardboard or paper and all you're doing is shifting it ever so slightly. So if you're trying to do that shadowing you don't have to shift it by very much at all. And you just make sure that your two colours are contrasting colours. Okay, just going to add straight copper to this, see how that looks. And then, because the other things were all shadowed, and this one is actually like a line drawing, so it's not going to be filled in leaves, it's going to be all line leaves. But you could choose to do whichever you like. See how we can just mix and match all of the stencils. And it just adds a little extra. Or you could just leave as is. Let's see how that turned out. 
a little bit of an extra leaf down there. Okay, I'm just going to pop the <coughs> frame on again to see how that might fit. And we could add another one to the top about here. Might have to be a little bit smaller. So we've got, there is a smaller one, I just saw it, here it is, over here, and we can just add it like that. And then I might add some of those leaves from the other stencil. So there we go, just sort of around about there. Let's see if I can put that sunflower out of the way. Whoa, I pulled my pumpkin apart down there. There we go, that one. Just adding it to where we don't want those other stencils showing up. There's another stencil, a sunflower right here. Cover that one up. And then we've got this nice little leaf showing here. Okay, a bit more copper. Offloading that onto the cardboard. And there we go. Who is crafting today? Who's crafting while they watch? I love it when you guys come on and share what you're working on as we're doing our lives. It's always fun to hear what everyone's working on. Or are you still doing dishes? <laughs> okay, there's another one. So we've got that little flourish up the top there. Let me bring those up close. So see how they're different? They're line drawings, whereas these leaves are filled in. So I could add then another maybe couple of leaves from this one that <coughs> are just by themselves. And so this one, for example, down here is a good one to just, because it's sort of separated at the end of the stencil and not joined into a bunch of others, we can add that as another little leaf that's just kind of dropped down here. Let's see if we can add that. random. So you could practice all this line, lying it out on a piece of, uh, and then I can just, you know, shift this around, create some more little leaf spots, leaf areas. But you could do this on a piece of cardboard or something like that first to get, oops, I've just shifted it. Ah! I felt that move as I move, as I picked it up. So now I'm going to have to find the exact spot where I was. There it is. Um, yeah, it's the kind of thing that you can work out your design before, beforehand. Or you could wing it like I am. <laughs> now because there's only two random leaves there, I feel like I have to have a third. And I didn't quite check out where we were up to with our placement there. So let's see. I feel like it would be falling away too much if I, oh, where is it? Could do a different leaf. Look at this one here. That's another little kind. But I do want another piece of tape. Easy to tape off our little bits and pieces to make sure we've got. Whoop. Make sure we've got them all covered so you don't have little random splashes of paint around. There we go. Okay, so where are we going to put this little guy? Maybe just out to the side, like so. I don't know. See how you could just kind of randomly add some leaves. Maybe we'll just add one up to the top here. could even add it to this branch as if it's falling, but it's falling upwards. <laughs> Little scattered leaves. There's our other one. I feel like we need another over this side. But you can do it however you like. That's the fun thing about it. And another, just here. 
one of these kind. Okay, let me see if I can catch up on your comments. What is everybody doing right now? That's what I was asking before. Let's see if we've got anybody sharing. Oop. It's tricky to try and see this. Oh, Ricky, uh, Debbie's loving this copper color. Yes. The extra leaves look great. Good, glad you're happy with that. I just tend to wing it here. Um, how far from the bottom do you start your growth board? Oh, you're asking someone else. Someone's done a growth leaner. Oh, you're doing that while you... Sonia, did you canning this past weekend? You guys are amazing. I love the canning posts. Thank goodness for ES Ambassadors to share these wonderful ideas. I'm so glad, glad you enjoy our ideas here on Essential Stencil. Okay, so there is a bit of an idea how you can add and flourish out and... Um, extend your different stencil collections with other things like for example this month's add-on for the stencil of the month club and then we'll just wash off all our stencils afterwards so if you missed the beginning of our live I was talking about the brand new winter collection that will be available for pre-order on Monday who else is excited about that Yes, I've got this, uh, the link for this copper colour in, um, oh no, I didn't put the link for the Fusion affiliate link. I can give that to you. Just ask me in the comments. I go back through and, and look at all your comments later and I send that to you. Um, yes. All right. Can't remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, about the winter collection coming up. Pre-orders starting on Monday. I'm so excited about that. I know some of you are too. Okay, if you missed also at the first part of our live, I showed you how we can use espresso wax. It's just a, a brown kind of wax to finish. And I've done these two edges. See how they're different than this raw pine? And I did these two edges in Fusion's espresso wax, which is a nice brown, golden brown color. And it gives it a lovely, smooth, soft finish. So then I will just um, staple my... It's just a... Uh, plywood board and I just use a nail gun or staples to pop that onto the back and I also do use a little bit of glue so what I'll do is just drizzle a little bit of wood glue around the edge here so that I can get that on neatly and tidily and then nail it and then look at the finished result. Now guys don't go anywhere because we're about to pick prize winners. And so if Essential Stencil is ready, we are ready to pick some prize winners. So I'll finish off the uh, waxing of this board and then so you can see that. But if you want other furniture painting tips, please visit my blog, irestorestuff.com. And don't forget to use my code, irestorestuff, when you're ordering from Essential Stencils to get your 10% off. That includes the pre-orders for the beautiful winter collection next week going on pre-sale on Monday um, and ready to ship I think the week after that so not too long and you'll have a whole bunch of beautiful uh, winter signs ready for and Christmas signs ready for all that Christmas crafting guys I bet some of you have gotten into the Christmas crafting already oh here's my site um, the website behind me is the essential stencil website with the winter collection if you missed that I just did a little quick scroll at the beginning of the live on um, all these fun signs oh my goodness look at all the fun that you will have with some of those in the winter collection I love the street signs I love the patterns and the cute little gnomes so much fun all right let me see if I can see our winners today let me know if you can see them Jean will watch the beginning on replay good idea and if you do watch the replay don't forget to comment the word replay another chance to win prizes Connie, you've started on your Christmas stencils. Good idea. Look, some people are selling them in stores, and so you kind of want to sell them as Christmas decoration before everyone's, way before Christmas, um, because people do start to decorate, and they want to be prepared for that. Also as Christmas gifts, too. Yes, I will, Joyce Ann. I'll come straight over and give you the link for the wax and the paint, Fusion Mineral Paint, using my affiliate link. That would be awesome. Congratulations, winners. Oh, I can see it and it's, let me scroll back. Jacqueline, oops, it keeps scrolling on me. 
Laurie and Joyce Ann. Woo, Joyce Ann, you won. Jacqueline and Laurie, congratulations to all of our winners today. There's some instructions on how you can claim your prize. Let them know you were a winner on my live today. And um, guys, I will see you next week for another fun DIY live right here on Essential Stencil. Meanwhile, jump over and follow me at I Restore Stuff on all of your socials. I'd love to see you there. See you next week. Bye.